the so when we look at kidney function, there's something that is often checked by as a screening tool by most family physicians called the estimated glomerular filtration rate. It's often found on the basic metabolic panel, and it is calculated based on something called serum creatinine. Right, serum creatinine is used to calculate what your GFR is, and it's an estimate. You know, for you guys that get your uh, uh, labs done in the United States, you'll almost always see, you know, two numbers. It'll be estimated GFR, which is what yours might be, unless you're African-American, and there'll be a different value for that. And the value for African-Americans usually shows an estimated GFR that is higher, typically around 10, 12%, something like that. Why is that? Okay, so the question is because the assumption is that African-Americans tend to carry more muscle mass than other population groups, and therefore their GFR will be higher. Creatinine is basically a reflection of body protein and protein turnover, uh, more or less. And so the standard way to measure GFR or calculate it, remember it's an estimate, using creatinine-based measures have a big flaw in that. And the flaw is protein turnover. And so people that have a lot of muscle mass, people that work out really hard, or people that are eating a lot of protein will artificially see an decrease in GFR. Remember, low GFR is considered bad, high GFR is considered good. Uh, one of the cutoffs often used is below or above 60. If you're below 60, uh, that's signs of early renal failure. You know, some people call that class one chronic renal, renal insufficiency. Above 90 is considered pretty good, and then above 100 is considered, you know, totally good. And so what happens if you go on a high protein diet, a carnivore diet, and all of a sudden your GFR shows up low? Well, your doctor's going to say, hey, you need to cut back on eating all that protein and red meat, and oh my gosh, your kidneys are frying. That most likely is an error. It's most likely due to their inability to understand the physiology. And so there's another test. Uh, it's called cystatin C. It's spelled C-Y-S-T-A-T-I-N. Most physicians haven't heard of it. Most physicians don't know about it, but it is a very well widely accepted tool for measuring another way of measuring the estimate of GFR. And it does not depend upon protein intake or protein turnover or muscle mass. And so when you do those together, you might see a low GFR with creatinine, but your GFR based on cystatin C is completely fine. So here's a nice example. Dr. Ted Nyman, or Dr. Ted Nyman, rather, sorry, Ted, um, had his done recently, and he saw the same exact thing. He's, you know, he's Ted's lean, he's fit, he's healthy, uh, he eats a high-protein diet. He's the, he's the author of the Protein Energy Ratio Diet for you guys that may or may not know him, who he is. Uh, I've interviewed him several times over the years. And he went and got his labs done. Oh, my God, his GFR was 54. That's going to be low, right? So what did he do? He did what any smart person would do that has a sense of knowledge. He got a cystatin C-based test. And what did his GFR show up in that situation? Well, it was 112, which is fine. I can tell you from my own personal experience, I had very similar numbers. I think my GFR at one point, so I saw, I think, 56. Checked it on cystatin C, it was 118. So good question, important concept. You need to educate your doctor. If you're a physician and watching me, just go read up on cystatin C. Look at the literature, the primary literature on cystatin C versus creatinine-based measurements, and you'll see that cystatin C completely eliminates the confounder of high-protein diets, high muscle mass, on and on and on. Uh, so anyway, we know meat is not killing your kidneys, high protein is not killing your kidneys. That's garbage, it's nonsense. Uh, a 2018 paper from Stu Phillips clearly demonstrated that. Um, so just educate yourself, guys. Good question.